taking off um, jagged things and, and unevenness and I, how many people have iPhones? There you go. How many know that they have a level app on the iPhone? Okay, so if you find that your pieces are like wonky, you use this and if you don't have a level, but you have an iPhone, I don't I, I believe you. I, <laughs> I can see this, I can see you, that's becoming blurry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a level, if the level's in use and you have an iPhone, you can do that and that will help you get, make sure your piece is level too. So that's just a little trick to get things to be level and smoother. Anyway, back to the actual trimming. So once again, I have this rounded out and smooth. So what you can put on, let's say you want to do a mug, it's not necessary, but you want to do a mug, you can do what's called a hidden foot. If you have trouble figuring out where to put the foot, you can always use your pin tool and do a series of lines. And see which one looks best to you. And when you pick it, you can just get rid of the other lines and go with that. And that's how you can figure out where to do a foot. You know, eventually, you will get your own sense of where you believe a foot should be. And for me, that sense is about a quarter inch in from like the apex of the curve. And I will use a, my square tool with the corner, and I'll carve the line. Over time, a lot of this stuff just becomes a mix of muscle memory and repetition. And as you develop a style, you'll just know where you want to put it. Okay? So a hidden foot is called that because it goes straight to the, uh, to the floor of the table. Okay? You'll see it like in coffee cups a lot. And I mean like a disposable coffee cup. You'll notice like it's got, it goes straight to there, straight to the table, but underneath it it's a little higher. Then think about your favorite Starbucks and cup. That's how it works. So you're doing the same thing with the mug. It doesn't happen in every mug, especially handmade mugs. But next time you're at Target or wherever that you buy, like, you know, $5 mug, look, flip the mug over, you'll notice. Especially those classically straight mugs that you see that. So to perform that, you start in the middle. Once again, my hand is moving slower than the speed of the wheel. And all I'm doing is just working my way out. And again, I'm going to do this three times. I like to have my hand here as well in case like it gets caught and maybe comes off, I can catch it. I've saved a couple pieces like that. It's also good to use my left thumb as a guide. You really want to avoid having your elbows kind of out like that because that'll make your hands shake and not as steady. I don't know what's going on with my mask. It just keeps going up in my eyes. The height of your foot is completely up to your sense of style. There's no right, wrong. You, you can have things like a foot this tall. You have ones with a foot that tall. It's completely up to you. Now I've done three times. I'm now going to flip and use the square side. This I'll do maybe once or twice. And the purpose of doing it is to just flatten out and make it smoother. And see it really defines the edge here. Usually the second time I don't really pull up as much, that's why I don't tell you to go for a third. Okay. So now I have to find the foot. This is the foot, this is the inside of the foot. I'm good with that. You have the outside, and as I was saying to you, 
you can use a metal rib for trimming purposes. I never use it to throw with because I find it you're gonna, you're gonna slice yourself with it. But trimming, it's excellent, especially to take off large swaths. So like you want something to be really straight, it's great. You want to like really solidify a curve, you bend it, it's really good. It's really excellent for getting rid of any sort of the ridges or, or little cuts that you do when you're trimming. Now I must apologize because typically I would show you to use a clean scouring pad, something cheap that you would get at a dollar store, which is what I mentioned before. Um, I have forgotten to get one. What that will do is sort of like soften everything, like the harsh the sh line that I have here. And if you don't want to do this part, you don't, wouldn't have to. But it softens everything up and makes it a little more comfortable to the touch. Remember, when someone's going to pick up your cup, whether it's a guest in your home, someone you gifted it to, or if you get to the point where you start selling it and a customer buys it, they're going to put their hand on the bottom. They're going to feel it. And if it feels sharp and rough, they're not going to enjoy it as much as it feels rounded and soft and they'll want to hold it in their hand. So I would use a green scouring pad right now and then I always have a little water and I always have my sponge. I'll go over it with my sponge. Even the sponge will help soften it up. And you see how that went from a sharp line to a softer line? And it'll become much more comfortable to touch on the bottom. And finally, you want to put your name on it. And that's how you would have a hidden foot. Now the question you have is like, you have something like going on at the top because you have like these pieces here and it's keeping you from getting there. So what you can do for this, fastest way to clean your wheel by the way, you put it upside up again. Use the same clay. Let's say this is too thick, whatever it is, I can come back and I can trim the top to make it smoother. You can also, and there, how many people this is their first class? I don't see this is your first class ever. Everyone else has had a class before, right? So you might have heard this. You're not allowed to trim the inside of your piece. Some people will tell you that. Um, how can I put this nicely? That's bullshit. <laughs> you can trim the inside of your piece. It's okay. And I've said this before, and I've had previous studio owners look at me like scowl at me, like, like you're not supposed to tell them that. And not because it's wrong, because it's like I'm giving away some secret stuff, but. <laughs> some old potters didn't want to ever admit to. You can trim the inside. Say you have the outside beautiful. You have it exactly the way you want it, but it's still really thick and you don't like it thick. Flip it over and trim the inside. Now the thing about trimming the inside of a piece is that as you trim it, everything's gonna fall in. So you're gonna have to stop more regularly and pull stuff out. That's really the only downside. You know, for instance, I have this here. If I don't like it, This will work too. This is similar to what you were doing. And now it's nice and smooth on the inside and it looks better. Right? And when you're done with your trimming, 
you have a couple of decisions to make. You might like your form just as it is, and you want to leave it alone. You might not like the form completely, and then you can sort of um, carve at it. You may want to paint it with a slip or a, or a um, underglaze. If that's the case, I would recommend waiting until it gets the bone dry. While it's still sort of leather hard, it's damp and will kind of reject some of the color, some of the underglaze, whereas when it's bone dry, it'll soak it up a lot faster. Okay. Um, and finally, if it's still like leather hardish, this would be the right time to put a handle on it if you wanted to. We're going to do handles probably about two or three weeks okay, as we get closer towards the, and everyone has more experience. Now, before I let you go, I do want to show you one other thing how to do more of a pronounced foot, which you would see definitely on bowls. Now you can do this pronounced foot also on your mug or cup. There's no reason why you can't. How do you know when a piece is ready to trim? You want it to be about leather hard, which is what this feels like. Okay, so that's not bone dry then? No, not bone dry. Uh, you never want to trim something bone dry. If it is bone dry and you still need to trim it, you have a couple of options. One is to do what I did, just keep spraying the hell out of it until it gets back to this leather hard feel. It takes a while, but spraying is better than trying to soak it in water or anything like that. The other thing you could do is wet trim, wet trim, wet trim. The idea is that you want to cut down on dust. You don't want to trim it when it's bone dry because it's going to be dust all over the place. It's not good. Not good to breathe. Not good for any reason whatsoever. So you want to keep it wet, trim, wet, trim. Keep the dust to an absolute minimum. Third option is I had mentioned that scouring pad before. You might just want to cut your losses and you can go right to scouring it and scrubbing it and you'd be amazed how much that can fix something that isn't trimmed. It's um, not as good as trim but it definitely does a pretty good job. You can tell this is already getting dry again because of the ashiness that you see here. So for the pronounced foot, You can see it's still very dry. I'm starting to get to just dust. So I do this. You always want to try and have ribbons. So I got it back to that flat, smooth stage. So you basically went down until it started hitting the flat around the edges? Mm-hmm. Yep. So now I'm going to do, again, about a quarter inch. And then I'll always estimate another quarter inch. This works well to have on both plates and bowls because it gets your fingers just underneath it and makes it easier to pick up. Where it's not necessary for a cup or a mug, not that you can't do it, but because you can just pick that straight up comfortably.
So now I'm going to work from the middle out and stop at that first inside line. Once again, flip to the flat side and just smooth it out. Another reason, by the way, that you want to do this when it's leather hard is the leather hardness will keep you, it'll give a little more resistance and make it harder to go right to the bottom and like go through it, by the way. Sometimes if you're going through it, it's because it's still too soft and because it's too soft, it's very easy to go down too deep. So now, I was holding this like a pen, I'm now going to hold it like a knife, I'm going to push straight down, and then I'm going to roll over the edge here, see? Once again, I do this three times. And then I'm going to flip to the square side. I could do that about three times, but I'm just going to jump ahead and show you how good this is. Sound nice? See how harsh that was, but then I go over it with the sponge. Again, even more about a scouring pad. And now it's a lot softer, so it's going to be more comfortable to touch. And then finally, put my name on it. <laughs> 